I wanted to tell my colleagues in the sector what I was doing, working with a team of five deputies and 13 advisors who were active. And we're doing three things, I think. We are uh, leading the area reviews, and I'm chairing the majority of those across the country in waves four and five. We are intervening in colleges that either have had an inadequate Ofsted recently or have had serious financial concerns, which usually amounts to requiring additional funding in year because they're running out of cash. And thirdly, I think I have a role in sharing the lessons learned from this so that we minimise uh, the number of colleges who make the same mistakes in the future. And some of the mistakes that colleges make uh, are ones that we've already uh, spoken about. So I think repetition of the lessons learned is a good thing. You know, new principals are coming in all the time, new chairs of governors are coming in, and I think some of the fundamentals need repeating. Yeah, I, the big one is, is the one about the gap, between not having a, an annual detailed costed curriculum plan. By that I mean that the finance side of the college and the curriculum side need to work incredibly closely so that before the year starts they have a plan, a map of the courses they're going to offer, where the income comes from those courses and equally important what the expenditure will be, what will it cost for the teachers and support staff. That needs to be aggregated for the finance director to be comfortable that the financial plan and the curriculum plan are wed together. Now you're nodding as though that's obvious. I think it's, but it's not always in place. Uh, particularly by the time we arrive for an intervention, that is not working properly. So that is definitely the biggest. And that leads to a number of problems. So we always recommend that staffing as a percentage of all your ter financial turnover should be 65% of turnover or less in our sector. It varies a bit. Land-based colleges tend to be a bit lower, sixth form colleges a bit higher. Uh, I still visit colleges and we visit colleges where it's 70% or more. The minute you get above 65, you're heading for some financial challenge. Uh, and my experience is it's best to do that ahead of the challenge hitting you uh, and always to make the, right, the reductions deeply enough that you're well set up for the future. What I worry about is people who do that year on year on year, significant restructuring year on year. You have to, if, if it's required and it's difficult work, but you need to reduce the size of your offer in one go because people want to move on then, not salami slice the cuts. So those are two. Um, we then find, I find lack of challenge in some of those colleges, challenge between the chair and the principal or the board and the senior management or maybe the senior management and the middle management. And there's a fine line, isn't there, between having a really pleasant working environment and having a bit of fun and enjoying where you work and particularly with the purpose being for the benefit of the learners. But actually people being able to stand back and say, well, I think we need to sit down and have a chat. People need to be held to account, I know I do. Um, everybody in my experience needs to be held to account by somebody uh, and uh, I'm a great believer in transparency so I like to go into college and see there are transparent processes for holding people to account and I don't mean that in, in any threat anyway. I, for me holding people to account is a wonderful opportunity to give people praise and say what a great job they're doing I think the colleges all of our colleges will continue to have two big challenges um, we are, as a sector, running on very tight margins financially. Um, uh, I'm a governor of a university, for example, and I see the difference in the margins. Now, it's a, universities are big, complex places to run, but the margins aren't as tight. You know, Our sector makes very small surpluses, and therefore it's very easy to get off track. So I think the financial challenge will continue, and we need to have enough good finance directors working very closely with their principals to keep their college on track. Um, the second one is we're going to have a raft of very worthwhile but, but um, demanding curriculum changes. The levy, the apprenticeship reforms, the implementation of Sainsbury, the insolvency regime, these are uh, uh, big changes for the sector to get hold of. Um, uh, uh, and. I think the sector will therefore remain as, as um, 
as subject to change and to tight financial margins as it has been the last five, six, in some ways ever since I've been in it, to be honest, but particularly the last half a dozen years. But if I think back to the 1990s, some of this was going on then, really. And um, it means the skills of a principal and a senior manager team are, are, are in, you know, demanding. And um, we need as a sector to improve the succession planning, the training and development of future leaders. Because the job, I, I did this job 21 years, it's a very different job to 21 years ago, and it'll be a very different job in 10 years time. We need to be working even smarter as a sector to develop the next generation of uh, leaders.